Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you track wiring in Reaper. Track wiring is a newer feature that was added in Reaper 6 that will give us a visual overview of our entire project. So a project set up here with some instruments, a drum track, a bass track, and some guitars. Then we have a bus, a reverb as an effects return, and a headphone track. So we can set up a separate headphone mix that will go to output three and four on our computer audio interface. But we haven't set up the wiring just yet. We're gonna do that in the track wiring window. So let's go to the view menu and choose track wiring. And that opens up this dialog where we can see a visual representation of our entire project and the signal flow on each track. I have an EQ plugin on the drums. I can click it and adjust it here. But we can see the signal flow in this track right from here. It starts with the EQ, goes to the fader, and then to the master. And we can set up the master pair and send from here as well. If we click this track, it takes it out of the master pair and send, which we can see if we click the routing right here. It's turned off. If we turn it back on, we can see it on here again, off and on. This sends our tracks to the master parent send, and then on to our stereo output, which is the main output on my computer audio interface one and two. So on the bass track, I have a compressor and an EQ, and we can see the signal flow on this track as well. It starts with the effects, goes to the fader, and the master parent send. And an EQ on the guitars, a compressor on the bus, and then finally a reverb plugin on the reverb effects return. Now we could also see our channels on each track right on the right side, right here. Our drums and bass and guitar all have two channels. And we could change this just by creating sends. But we'll come back to that in a bit. Let's start off by creating sends to our bus. We'll send the drums, bass, and guitars to this track. So we'll start off by taking them out of the master parent send, just by clicking here, here, and here. Then we'll send these tracks to our bus, which is still going out the master parent send right here. And we could do that with these little plus signs on each track. And you'll notice there's three of them, one for each type of send. The first one up here is pre effects. And the second one is pre fader post effects. And the third one is post fader. So it's based on the signal flow that we're seeing here. So if we create a send before the EQ and drag it to the bus, we can see that send is pre effects. Right here, the send comes before the EQ. And we could delete it with the modifier, Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac to delete it. Let's create another one, but this time pre fader post effects. So it comes after the EQ, but before the fader, right here. And drag and drop it to our bus. And we can see this send is pre fader post effects. And it shows up after the EQ, but before the fader. Let's delete this one as well. Let's create it with a third plus sign, which is post fader. Drag and drop it. Now we can see it comes after the effects and after the fader. So this send is post fader and post effects. So let's do the same thing for the bass. Use the third one, so it's post fader. And the same for the guitars. And now we can see the wiring from the instrument tracks to our bus right over here. And we can readjust those sends either from here individually or as receives on the bus track. Just click them and readjust them from here. 
But let's also set up our effect sends to our reverb return. And we'll do it the same way with the third plus sign. So it's post fader. Just drag and drop it on the reverb. And the same with our bass and our guitars. So now we could adjust the reverb for the drums right here, for our bass right here, and our guitars right here. Or we could do it with the receives right here, here, or here. Now you can start to notice that these wires are getting kind of messy. If we want to clean this up, we could right click up here to go to the menu and choose only show send wires on track mouse over. So if we choose this, we're not going to see the wires for our tracks unless you put the mouse on those tracks. So we can see it for the drums, for the bass, for the guitars, for the reverb, and our bus. Makes it a lot cleaner without seeing all the wires at the same time. Now let's set up a headphone mix. By default, it's sending to the master, pair and send. We should turn that off. And instead, let's send it to the output on my computer audio interface to three and four. One and two are being used for the main speakers. So I can just drag a post fader send and drop it on channels three and four. And we can see it right here and also see it right here going to the headphones. So now to create a headphone mix for these tracks, we can just send a pre fader post effects send from each of the tracks. So we'll grab the second plus sign and drag and drop it to the headphones. And do the same with the bass and the guitars. Now we can set up a separate headphone mix for each of the tracks, just by clicking on the receives for the drums, the bass, and the guitars. Or we could do it on the individual tracks, right over here, for the drums, the bass, and the guitars. And once again, notice that the headphone send comes after the effects, but before the fader, because it's pre-fader post effects, while the other sends come after the fader, so they're post-fader. So again, we're starting to see a lot of wires, because the hardware output is set up over here and over here. We can clean that up by right-clicking in the menu, and this time choosing only show hardware output or input wires on track mouse over. So if we choose this, we're not going to see those hardware output wires unless we mouse over those tracks, like the headphones or the master. And we'll still see the sends when we mouse over the drums, bass, guitars, reverb, and our bus. Again, just keeps it nice and clean. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can create sends to go to other channels on our tracks. For example, with the compressor on the bass, we could set it up as a side chain using channels three and four. Just switch it here to auxiliary left and right. Then we could side chain from the drums to the bass compressor by creating a send like this. We'll go post effects, but pre fader and drag and drop it over on the channels and then create two more just by going over here. So now this is three and four, which we could see if we select this send, output one and two to three and four on the bass. And now our drums are triggering the compressor on the bass track, as we can see on channel three and four on the bass. So we could add channels automatically while creating our sends. Now, if we're dealing with a lot of tracks, we can collapse all these tracks very easily using the triangle right here to make each track a little smaller and a lot easier to see with a very big project. So you can move these around and make it easier to see more tracks or open them back up by hitting the triangle again. And if it gets too messy and hard to see, 
we could right click up here and choose reset all track positions. It cleans it up so you can see all the tracks completely separate from each other. Or we could do it manually and it can look like this. So that's pretty much it. That's the track wiring in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.